Hello, welcome to our video series on the DTS Content Creator AAX plugin suite. I will be showing you mono and multi-channel versions of the DTS Creator Panner, DTS Renderer Input, which is an audio and automation aggregator, and in this video I will go over DTS Monitor, which controls real-time rendering, exports, file playback, and channel routing. The first thing you will see at the top of the Monitor plugin is the channel naming and output order. Clicking on the icon in the upper right corner of this section will bring up the routing menu. As you can see, we already have two 8-channel monitors assigned to output a 7.1 configuration. If we unassign the output in this instance, it will tell you which is the first available channel that can be routed. Selecting this populates each channel automatically. To see the additional outputs, we can go to the second instance of DTS Monitor where we can see the last four channels of the 7.1.4. There are a number of different configurations to choose from with a maximum of 64 outputs, but for simplicity's sake, we'll be working with the standard 7.1. In the center of the plugin, you can see the monitor controls. This allows you basic level control to vary your reference level across every instance of DTS monitor without affecting recording or exports. You also have a dim button, which drops your monitor level 20 dB. The bottom section allows you to choose from render, export, and playback. Render refers to real-time rendering, either in playback or stop, which allows for live inputs and scrubbing. The export button immediately brings up a browser, which allows you to choose where to place your export. We will go into detail on this feature in a future video. Playback allows you to playback a number of file formats in perfect sync with Pro Tools. Press browse to select the file and then set your offset. You will now be listening to a rendered file and not your Pro Tools session. The specifics of this process will be detailed as well in a future video. In the top right corner is your settings icon. In here, you can choose which type of audio engine you're using, HDX, native, or core audio. I'm using core audio because I'm currently on my laptop. This setting becomes important for delay compensation, which is explained also in a later video. The network settings are used for DTS administrator and DTS control. Though primarily for multi-machine setups, you can also use them with a single system. If this is the case, it is recommended that you use the machine's internal IP address starting with 127. You can name your machine anything you like, but we recommend that you leave the port number as default unless specifically instructed by your network administrator. It is only necessary to set this up once, as they are common between every type and instance of DTS plugin. That's it for DTS Monitor. Please join me for our next video detailing DTS renderer input.